For some cancer patients, the fight to survive, unfortunately, comes down to money. And patients relying on one cancer drug are finding that out the hard way. The Wall Street Journal is reporting the cancer drug known as Lomustine spiked to $768 per pill. That's a 1,400% increase since 2013. Lomustine is used to treat brain tumors and Hodgkin lymphoma, but has no generic competition. A Miami-based startup called NextSource is the only company selling the drug. It is now accused of price gouging. Peter Loftus is the reporter for The Wall Street Journal covering this story, and he joins us now from Philadelphia. Uh, Peter, some great reporting here. L let's start out by asking you, um, how are these prices affecting patients who need these drugs to survive? Well, in some cases, um, if patients... Uh are exposed to, to high out-of-pocket costs uh, with their even with their insurance plans. Um, they're finding that the price increase means that uh, they're exposed to um, a much greater personal cost um, than they might be when the price was lower, or if they had uh, an insurance plan um, that 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 paid for more of the cost of the drug. So usually uh, when a drug is made available, there are companies that jump in and create generic, cheaper versions. Why is this not happening in this case? Well, it's, it's an interesting question. I mean, this is a drug that's uh, 40 years old. And so it's, it, the, the patent has long expired. And so um, theoretically, there should be the opportunity for other companies to come in and make a generic copy. Um, but in talking to, to, to people in the generic drug industry, they say that it's not always a simple decision um, to, to just rush in and sell uh, a generic drug because uh, the, the patient population might be relatively small. And that is the case with this drug. It's not a widely used drug. And um, you know, they have to make decisions about investing in manufacturing and um, complying with regulators. Uh, and, and so they, they may decide, generic companies decide, I'm going to I'm going to pass over this very uh, limited market and go for um, a, a drug that has a much bigger market. Uh, so, Peter, in your report uh, in the journal, um, the company NextSource and its C chief executive uh, had a statement. They say uh, the pricing on product development, uh, the company based the price on product development costs, regulatory agency fees, and the benefit the treatment delivers to patients. It also said that it provides discounts to uninsured patients and those with financial limitations. Um, but also in the piece, you focus on uh, Gary Greitzer, um, who was being treated for a brain tumor, uh, but then decided his family decided it was too expensive. So what kind of discounts can a, somebody who needs this drug to survive expect? Well, it, I mean, there are certain, uh, if someone meets the income requirements, um, you know, if they have a relatively low income, um, they might either get the drug for free or at a pretty steep discount. And there are some government programs uh, that where, where the company says they, they provide the, um, the drug for as little as five cents a capsule. But it's the, I mean, the list price is up to 768 a capsule. And so that's where there's situations where that's causing people to, um, to have to bear much more of the cost of that list price. And in the article, it says that the FDA is looking into speeding up the process of approval. But I wrote down like a little note next to that because I thought, does speeding up the process bring the cost down for the provider and then bring the cost down for the consumer as well? I mean, how is the FDA reacting to this? What's the plan? Well, I think I mean I think their feeling is they they've identified that there are more than 300 drugs um, that you know have long been off patent, and so theoretically there there could be a generic competitor, but for a variety of reasons there aren't, and so the, the FDA says by identifying and publicizing this list of drugs, and then saying that they'll you know if a generic company comes in and wants to sell a lower cost copy of this drug or other drugs on that list, the FDA will, instead of taking, you know, may, maybe a couple years to approve or, or whatever the, uh, the standard time frame is, they'll try to speed that up. And then by having a generic competitor on the market, that, that should lead to uh, lower prices for, uh, you know, a generic copy and, and possibly the brand as well. Uh, Peter, in your piece, uh, you have a doctor here quoted, uh, Dr. Friedman, who says, quote, this is simply price gouging, period. Is that the sentiment amongst uh, many of the doctors you've spoken to? 
Yeah, I've heard from from other doctors that feel that way, and I think, um, you know, it's interesting. I think um, 10 or 20 years ago, a lot of doctors, um, and and maybe even especially cancer doctors, uh, didn't talk a lot about uh, cost and price. Uh, you know, they just they felt like their their main uh, realm was to just prescribe the best treatment option, but prices really across the board for cancer drugs ha- have gone up quite a bit um, in recent years. And so that's kind of brought this more and more to doctors' uh, attention. And so it, it's actually affected uh, which drugs they prescribe. And I think the other thing that has people um, concerned is that this company that currently sells the drug uh, just acquired it within the past four years. And that's when all the price increases um uh, have happened, and so they were not the company that invented this drug or made the initial vet investment in, in research and development and the initial marketing. It was another company that did that for almost 40 years. Hmm. Peter Loftus from the Wall Street Journal, really interesting story. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me on.